Hey guys, so uh, generally on this channel, <coughs> a lot of the content that we've covered has been around uh, looking at individual stocks, trying to make out if they're a good investment or not, right? And similar with crypto as well, we've sort of looked at fundamentals, we've sort of looked at technicals on the chart, and we've sort of tried to find out what would be good prices to be averaging into stocks. In this video, we're trying to do something a little different, and pardon <laughs> the poor quality of the image, it's the best I could find. Uh, so uh, in this video, what we're trying to do is look at the simple part to wealth which is a book written by jl collins uh, so in the financial independence retire early community uh, the fundamental concept is that uh, the best kind of freedom you can have is freedom over your own time right and being financially independent not having to rely on an income for survival uh, gives you that freedom and there are multiple books in this space like your money or your life by vicky robbins i think is the right name i can double check on that yep so uh, and uh, which, which is like considered a bible in the financial independence realm but uh, i read it it's a great book there's a lot there's a lot you can take away from it in terms of uh, a framework on how to uh, structure your thinking around money but uh, the simple part to wealth for me is probably the most effective and you know the most useful personal finance book i've ever read right there's a lot of actionable insights and uh, it gives you a proper step by step sort of checklist to get to financial freedom and it even gives you timelines it gives you specific assets to invest in so let's jump straight into uh, the summary of the book the simple part to wealth basically says that uh, there are two phases to you know the on the path to wealth right and the first one is wealth creation where you're basically looking to uh, grow your corpus to a level which can sustain your lifestyle and the, and once you attain that level once you attain financial freedom then the next phase is obviously wealth preservation where, where you're basically trying to generate returns from your corpus and then live off it uh, so the fundamental concepts outlined in the book are that you know picking individual stocks creating a portfolio that beats the market is not as easy as people make it out to be a lot of your you know fund managers claim to sort of create alpha and you know produce market beating returns but over a long period of time and you know it, it's backed up by data in the book i think this was written uh, a while back and then refreshed in the 2010s but even then you know back tested for 20 years over a long period of time a very statistically insignificant proportion of mutual fund managers are actually able to beat uh, the market on a consistent basis and you know stat statistically this turns out to almost zero uh, so colin says that the layman cannot analyze companies like warren buffet can it's a god-given gift and it, it, it's what he's famous for it's what he's revered for in the investing world and for the normal layman the normal retail investor to go and say okay i'm gonna beat the market as well is wishful thinking and uh, mr colin swears by low-cost index funds which mimic uh, large indexes at a very low, uh, you know, expense ratio. Expense ratio is basically the total amount of each installment which goes to the fund manager for managing. And actively managed funds have <coughs> expense ratios ranging from anywhere from uh, one percent to two and a half percent in India. And I'm I'm guessing it's along similar lines in the US as well. And these returns over a short period of time might not look like much, but over a long period of time they create they have a significant impact on. Uh, uh, you know your return so let's jump straight into an excel file to sort of look at uh, the impact of these expense ratios so what we have right here is uh, two mutual funds which let's say uh, produce the same returns at around about 12 percent i've chosen 12 percent because this is roughly the cagr that uh, investing in indexes will give you over a long period of time right the first one is a vanguard fund uh, which you know jack bogle godfather of in index investing and you know some, uh, a person who's revered by uh, the financial independence community so uh, expense ratio for the first fund is 0 0.03 very minimal expense ratio for the second fund is one percent which a lot of actively managed funds take at the time right and let's assume we invest ten thousand every month in both these funds both these funds produce 12 percent returns uh, and you know you increase your investment by roughly 10 percent every year right? and you tend to and you do this for 20 years so at the end, 19,75,591 is the difference between returns, right? And this is roughly 1 crore 95 lakhs, here you have 1 crore 75 lakhs. So over a 20, period, 20 year period, you're lo losing roughly a lakh a year 
to expenses right and these may not look like a lot you know uh, over a period of let's say a year or two years but it compounds and it grows to like this huge amount and you know if if this number doesn't sort of wake you up to uh, if you're probably thinking okay i can't, I can't invest 10000 a month let's drop a smaller number in there still consistent 9 lakhs you can get a triumph tiger for that amount man you you're losing a triumph tiger to expenses right and yeah so definitely not something that i don't want to lose so this uh, aspect of the simple part to well definitely resonates with me and uh, let's jump into the specifics of the wealth accumulation phase so what's different about this book is a lot of books will give you very vague investing advice and you know sort of try to stay clear of specifics because it can come back to bite you right but mr collins puts his money where his mouth is literally he tells you to buy every month the vtsax which is the vanguard total us stock market fund with uh, an expense ratio of 0.03 now this again has created returns of roughly 13% year on year so let me jump straight into where it that go okay yep so let's jump straight into performance of the vanguard fund year on year as you can see it has a 10 year cagr of 13% very respectful returns and five years cagr of 12% inflation is at 6% so you are making double inflation three year is offset by a bit of these negative returns because we were in a bull market and then it sort of uh, fallen quite a bit in the recent past and there will always be these drawdowns right so 20% swings in the market are par for the course and if you look at the kind of beating that tech stocks in the us have taken 20% is like nothing right and if you want to look at expense ratios in case you don't believe me you don't believe my powerpoint let's go to the vanguard website and look at expense ratio 0.03 almost nothing right and if you want to look at its equivalent in the indian market then you have the navi nifty 50 direct growth front and from what i remember expense ratio is 0.06 double that of vanguard but yep 0.06 right there double that of vanguard but still pretty low compared to other fund fees in india so the first uh principle of uh, the simple part to wealth is you don't bother picking individual stocks you just invest in the total stock market so we don't have an equivalent of the total us stock or total you know us stock market fund in india what you have is nifty 50 index trackers which sort of produce similar returns second point is you build a mentality of frugality so if your monthly salary is a lakh you have to resign yourself mentally to living on 50000 a month which is doable for sure uh, you might have to maybe skimp on a couple of luxuries but living on 15000 a month in if you do not have too many financial liabilities is very possible Ill illustrative numbers of course third point is stocks come with volatility having and again in the wealth accumulation phase you are recommended to have your portfolio 100% in stocks with no other asset classes right and this definitely comes with volatility for instance if you started investing at the top when nifty was at around 18000 you are down now roughly 20 25% which is a scary place to be but you know again invest with a long term horizon back to point number 1 over a long period of time the market always goes up and personally i am bullish on the stories of india and the us so the india index and us index are good places to be investing your money and this is with regards to the wealth accumulation phase and you reach financial independence when <coughs> you're able to live on a withdrawal rate of 4% so basically your portfolio becomes 25 times your annual expenses so let's look at this on an excel sheet so let's say you have monthly expenses of a lakh i'm just using this because it's a nice round number right your expenses are 12 times that 12 lakhs fi money would be your yearly expenses into 25 so a, a person who spends a lakh a month who needs a lakh a month to live at a at a certain level will need a corpus of 3 crores to be able to withdraw and call himself financially independent now let's assume you have a withdrawal rate of 4% so all this money is invested in the stock market at a certain ratio of if you're in the wealth preservation phase then the ratio is 75% stocks and 25% bonds right 
the logic is if you're able to maintain a withdrawal rate of 4%, let's go back to the uh, for a minute. Yep. A withdrawal rate of 4% with 75% in stocks and 25 20% in bonds, backtested for 20 years, will either in its worst case scenario sustain or not go to zero and in, in its best case scenario will grow and exceed in value even if you continue to you know take out four percent every year right and if you decrease the withdrawal rate to three percent if you're able to live on like three percent of your total corpus every year uh, even if you're at 50 percent stocks and 50 percent bonds if that is the split of your portfolio even then uh, it's like a hundred percent success rate you will not run out of money your corpus will actually grow in value uh, if you maintain this withdrawal rate of 3%. Again, these are illustrative numbers. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule that you have to stick to three, but you know uh, these are uh, the stats which are present in the book and I'm just using those to make a point. And again, uh, he suggests the total bond market fund VBLTX, uh, which is sort of supposed to give you an anchor in the market and sort of, uh, you know, uh, sort of a hedge against market fluctuations. But if you look at, the returns that the total total bond market fund has made. So in three years, your five year average return is 2.24%. So maybe when Mr. Uh, Collins was writing this book, bonds were a good hedge because he was still making maybe around 67% uh, after the expenses on it. But I think the bond market has taken a bit of beating. I'm not too sure this is the best place to be, but you know, it's something we can do our research into and find a similar hedge fds in india or if you look at uh, stuff like fds in uh, companies like in money they give you market beating returns of seven to eight percent at times and those are good places to be parking the hedge money right let's go back to the excel to sort of look at how the numbers would play out once you actually start living on this corpus so let's assume at the time of retirement your monthly expenses are a crore which means your FI money, your corpus should be three crores for it to be able to sustain your lifestyle. Withdrawal rate of 4%. 4% 4 of uh, three crores is 12 lakhs, right? And long-term capital gain can, uh, uh, gains tax of 10%. Uh, your tax amount is basically a lakh in 20,000. I direct that from 12 lakhs, you get 10 lakh 80,000, right? So 10 lakh 80,000 is the amount of money you need to, uh, you know, sustain your lifestyle comfortably uh in a year right and instead of maintaining this corpus of uh 75 percent stocks and 20 percent bonds like mr cooper suggests in india you have fds which give you 5.8 percent annual i think that was the rate when i invite in when i said last in fds right uh 5.8 percent right so park your money in an fd generates interest of 17 lakhs a year, 17.25. You pay 10% tax on that. So what you have left is 15 lakhs, 52,500. I deduct that, I deduct your expenses of 10 lakh 80,000 from this, and you still have a surplus of 4 lakhs, 72,000. So this could be money that you invest back or you give yourself something every year, it depends, but you know. Uh, building a corpus of 25 times your annual income gives you all these options. You can either invest in an FD and make safe returns, or you can continue to stay invested in the stock market or trade options and make, you know, uh, returns of, let's say 10, 15% a year is good. Option traders make maybe 30, 40% a year. So let's assume I add that percent here. Now you have 97 lakhs, 20,000. Okay, I'm not sure looking at this right. Yep, 97 lakhs, 20,000 right here. So, where you invest in how you use your corpus is entirely up to you, but you know, you can grow it at different rates and live off it. It's the basic point I'm trying to make. So, yep, and how do you invest in the Indian scenario? Uh, in money gives you access to ETI which is the lower cost equivalent of, because VTSAX basically has a minimum investment amount of $3,000, which isn't accessible to everyone in India. So you can invest in VTI. You have Navi index funds, which mimic the Indian indexes and you know make roughly maybe 12, 13% a year. You have index funds from other fund houses, which also have low expense ratios because these aren't actively managed funds. 
so in short uh the simple part to wealth is a great book which takes away a lot of the headache around stock picking and you know asset allocation and what not uh, i'll try and link the amazon you know amazon link in the description and i'd recommend everybody read it and you know just go on youtube or podcast and just search jail collins is like a treasure trove of information and he's someone i really look up to someone i want to have a conversation on money you know with at some point of time i've been trying to get in touch with him but hasn't happened till now and hopefully it does happen in the future so uh happy investing happy trading 